Let's explore this cool and intellectually stimulating assessment test question together. You're presented with the picture, and you need to determine what would be the most effective method to accomplish this transformation in PowerPoint. You have five possible choices. Choice A – using fade animation. Choice B – using motion path. Choice C – using enhanced morph. Choice D – using picture format. And last but not least, choice E – using effect options. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Let's seamlessly transition into revealing of the solution because I'm thrilled to present you how I tackled the problem. And if you got a smart choice that you selected, please share it in comments. To get to the correct answer, let's look at different options presented in this question to determine why they might be incorrect. Let's start with the choice A, fade animation. This option involves fading in and out, but it does not provide the same fluid transformation we're looking for. Choice B, motion path, is also incorrect. While motion path can create movement, motion path does not offer same precise logo transformation as we're looking for. Choice D, picture format, is also incorrect. This option relates to formatting of the images, but it does not directly support logo transformation. And you're probably not surprised that choice E, effect options, is also incorrect. Effect option provides adjustments to animation effect, but it does not perform any actual transformations. Which leads us to correct choice C, enhanced morph feature. Enhanced morph is the most effective method to smoothly transform one logo image into another inside the PowerPoint. This allows for seamless transitions and it is specifically designed for this purpose. Morph transformation is extremely easy to use. In the first step, you need to add images to the slides. Then you select Selection Pane to rename your shapes, and you need to add exclamation marks and then name of the shape. You choose the second image and also rename it. The important notice here is that you need to match both names of both images and start the name with double exclamation mark. In the next step, you select Transition menu and choose Morph. And then you check that everything works correctly. In this section, we will look at Microsoft Word assessment test questions, which evaluate candidates' proficiency and skills in using this widely used Microsoft Office application. Word assessment test aims to determine candidates' familiarity with the software itself, including its various features, tool, and formatting options. Let's look at some sample Microsoft Word assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Here's the thought-provoking assessment test question. In addition to boosting your reasoning skills, it teaches you the skill that you can use regularly. You need to gather the data and information from multiple different sources, like emails, web pages, spreadsheets, and documents. Which feature of Microsoft Word should you use to complete this task? And you're presented with five possible choices. Choice A, paste link. Choice B, paste special. Choice C, paste merged content. Choice D, paste multiple. And last but not least, choice E, paste append. Take a close look to see if you can recognize the right feature of Microsoft Word. Are you ready to uncover the mystery? Let's move on so I can share how I cracked the solution. And if you got a unique methods or better way, I'd love to hear it. Don't forget to share your approach in the comments below. Let's reveal the solution now. And as usual, to find the right solution, we will assess each answer choice that has been presented. Let's start with the first choice on the list. As you might have guessed, choice A, paste link, is incorrect. Paste link is used to insert a link to content copied from another location, not to collect the data and information from various sources. Choice B, paste special, is also incorrect. Paste special allows you to choose specific formatting or data types when pasting content, but it's not the appropriate feature to collect data from various sources. Both choices C, paste merged content, and choice E, paste append, are not correct options either. Both of them are not the standard features of Microsoft Word and are not relevant for collecting data from various sources. Which leads us to correct option, choice D, paste multiple items from clipboard. This is the correct option. Paste multiple items allows you to paste multiple pieces of content that has been copied to the clipboard. 
making it an efficient way to collect the data and information from various sources. Let's look at how this feature works in details. For example, you might be working on the product catalog and your information is located in different sources, like this Word document, and some information might be stored in the email message you just received. You need to copy and paste multiple pieces of information into the product catalog Word file. To do this, let's check the clipboard settings by clicking on the clipboard details button. As you can see, there is nothing currently in the clipboard. Let's check the options on how we can collect the data. To do this, let's click on the options button and you see that the clipboard will collect without showing any office clipboard. You can also choose options show office clipboard automatically or show office clipboard when control C press twice. Let's copy the product description from the word file. To do this, let's select the description and click copy. Now let's copy product image and dimensions from the email. To do this, let's select the image and click copy. Then let's select the dimensions and click copy again. Now it's time to come back to our Word document. We're back to the product catalog. And as you can see, there are three items in the clipboard now. We can paste them one by one. Let's put the cursor where the description is and select on the description to paste it. Now let's move to the dimensions section and we can paste the dimensions in here. And last but not least piece is the image. We put it as the first item in the product catalog. The only thing is left is to change how the image is shown. We click on the layout options and select the tight option for the text wrapping. Here's the very stimulating assessment test question. It boosts your analytical skills and enhances your ability to approach complex problems using Microsoft tools very effectively. You need to create a report by selecting specific short snippets of content from larger Microsoft Word document and adding them into the report. Which word feature is the most effective for this task? You're presented with five possible choices. Choice A, styles and headings. Choice B, navigation pane. Choice C, spike. Choice D, find and replace. And last but not least, choice E, table of content. Take a close look, analyze the question, and select your answer. Are you ready to compare solutions? Awesome! Let's now transition into revealing the answer. I'll share with you my take on the solution. And if you come up with the different or perhaps more efficient approach, feel free to drop it in comments below. Let's explore the solution together. To get to the correct answer, let's review each presented option individually. Let's start with the option A, styles and headings. As you might have guessed, this is an incorrect option. While styles and headings are useful for formatting and structuring a document, they don't involve selection and relocation of specific content making them less effective for this particular task. For a very similar reasons, choice B, navigation pane, is also incorrect. The navigation pane is helpful for browsing and organizing the document, but unfortunately this option does not specifically involve cutting and pasting of selecting content, making it less suitable for the task described. Choice D, find and replace, is also incorrect. The find and replace option in Microsoft Word is used to search for specific text and replace it with other text. But this option does not involve the selection and relocation of content. And as you might have guessed, choice E, table of content, is also incorrect. Table of content is a very useful feature in Microsoft Word and it is used for creating an organized list of headings and subheadings in the document. But unfortunately, it is not intended for selecting and moving specific content within the document. Which leads us to choice C, spike, which I believe is correct. Spike is an unknown feature in Microsoft Word which represents a storage similar to clipboard. The storage is designed to cut multiple blocks of text or other content and paste them elsewhere in the document or into another Microsoft Word file. I think this is an efficient tool for selecting a specific content and organizing it within the report. Let's take a close look to see how Spike feature works. You are presented with the text that contains multiple paragraphs. You reviewed the text and you determined that selective sentences in this text are very good content for the future report. To select the text for the report, you need to select it and then click Ctrl F3. This cuts the text and puts it into the spike. Let's do it for a couple other sentences that might be useful for the report. We select the second sentence and click again Ctrl F3. And then another sentence and click Ctrl F3. 
Now let's switch to a new Microsoft Word document so we can paste the content. There are multiple ways to paste it. Let's go to Insert tab, then navigate to Quick Parts, Auto Text, and this is where you see the content of the spike, and by clicking it, you will paste it directly into the new file. Let's undo this action, and I'll show you the quick shortcut that allows you to do the same thing. You can click Ctrl Shift F3, and it will paste the text directly by using the shortcut in the keyboard. So the correct answer here is choice C, using spike feature of Microsoft Word. If you came up with the different or perhaps more efficient approach, feel free to drop it in comments so we can all learn. Let me share with you a tricky question we see on the test more and more often. To prepare a sample file for an employee training session, you need to generate unique text for each student in the class using Microsoft Word. What is the best way to do it? And you're presented with five different options. Choice A, use Word formula. Choice B, copy and paste. Choice C, auto text and building blocks. Choice D, auto correct. And last but not least, choice E, mail merge. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Tricky question, don't you think so? Well, I think I know what my answer is going to be, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments so we can all learn. To answer this question, let's analyze all the options to understand why they might be incorrect. Let's start by looking at option B, copy and paste. It is true that you can generate new text by copying content from another document or another source, for example, website or another Word document, and then pasting it into your Word document. You can use Ctrl-C to copy and Ctrl-V to paste. However, this option is not ideal for generating unique text for each student and may pose copyright issues. I think option C, auto text and building blocks, is also incorrect. Microsoft Word has a feature called Auto Text. It is also called Building Blocks in the new versions. And this feature allows you to store and insert frequently used text or context snippets with just a few clicks. While it can be convenient for inserting predefined text, it does not generate unique text for each student. Choice D, AutoCorrect, is also not a good choice. AutoCorrect is the feature that corrects common misspellings and can be used to create shortcuts for longer phrases. But unfortunately, it does not generate unique text for each student. I think mail merge is also incorrect. Mail merge is useful for generating customized documents by merging data from spreadsheet or database into predefined templates. However, it's not suitable for generating unique text for each student for the training session. Which brings us to option A, use Word formula. Microsoft Word has a formula called RAND and if you type it and hit enter, by default it will generate five paragraphs of three sentences each. This cool feature is also called placeholder text. The generated text is localized for your language selection. What's interesting is that the text is localized for your language selection on your computer. To customize your text, you type RAND and enter number of paragraphs and number of sentences and then hit enter. For example, if you type RAND 7, 5, it will generate the text for 7 paragraphs with 5 sentences each. You can also use a lorem function to generate non-localized pseudo-Latin text in Microsoft Word. What's amazing about this question is that you will not just learn the answer, but you will also learn about new features of the application. Here's the question. You're collaborating with colleagues to create the final version of Microsoft Word document. Multiple versions of text exist, and you want to preserve each version. Which word feature is the most effective for this task? And you're presented with five possible choices. Choice A, file properties. Choice B, hide text. Choice C, document comparison. Choice D, comments. And last but not least, choice E, track changes. Take a close look to see if you can answer this question. I think I know what my answer is going to be. So I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have thoughts or different feedback or suggestions, please make sure to post them in comments. To get to the correct answer, let's analyze each option to determine if it is correct. Let's start by looking at choice A, file properties. 
I think using the properties features in Word, you can add version information, comments, or other metadata to the document's file properties. I think this is a helpful feature to manage different versions of the document, but it does not preserve the text itself. So I think this is an incorrect choice. Let's look at choice C, document comparison. I think this choice is also incorrect. Microsoft Word offers a built-in document comparison feature, which allows you to compare two versions of the document and highlight differences between them. While this is helpful for tracking changes, it doesn't directly preserve multiple versions of the text within the same document. I think choice D, comments, is also incorrect. You can insert comments at specific points in the document to provide feedback or suggestions. Comments serve as annotations, but don't preserve distinct versions of the text itself. And I hope it doesn't come to you as a surprise that choice E, track changes, is also incorrect. This feature of Microsoft Word records edits made by collaborations and facilitates reviewing and accepting or rejecting changes. It does help with version control, but it does not inherently preserve multiple versions of the text for the future reference. This brings us to the answer of choice B, hide text. What's interesting, Microsoft Word allows you to hide the text, making it appear as if it isn't there while preserving it for the later use. This feature is very useful when you want to maintain different versions of content within the same document, and it also applies to images and embedded components. There is one limitation of this function because it's available in Word on the desktop, but not in Word Online or Word apps for Android or iOS. Because hiding the text is such a useful feature, let's take a look how you can use it in more details. Let's assume that you're editing this text and you're not happy with the text in this paragraph. What you can do, you can select the text, click the details in the font section of the ribbon, and click hidden to hide this text. If you have the image in your text, you can hide it in the same way. You just select the text and the image, or just the image, navigate to the font properties section, and click hidden. To unhide it, you follow the opposite steps. Click on the properties. To view hidden text, you click on the show hide button in the ribbon. As you can see, the text that we hide is underlined with the dotted line. This is the example of the hidden text, as well as this is also an example of the hidden text with the image. What's cool is that you can use Word's Find and Replace option to search for the hidden text. You click on the Replace button, and then you click on More. Here, in Format section, you select the font, and here you select Find Hidden Text. Then you click Find Next, and Word keeps searching for the hidden text. What's cool is that Word also allows you to delete all hidden text at once, for example, before you send out the final version of the document. To do this, you navigate to the file, Info, and then check for Issues, and select Inspect Document. Here in the section, you can specifically select items you're looking for, but also focus on the hidden text, which would inspect the document for the text that has been formatted as hidden. So I believe the correct answer here is choice B, hide text. In cases where you need to track changes, obtain feedback, or manage versions, features like track changes or comments may be more appropriate. But in this particular case, for maintaining different versions within a single document, while keeping them hidden until needed, hide text is a very cool and effective option. Do you disagree? If you do, please make sure to share your thoughts, solution, and rationale in comments. Let's dive into this captivating assessment test question. By working through this, you will improve your ability to think logically and make sound decisions in Microsoft Word. As a marketing manager for United States-based company, you are customizing Microsoft Word-based catalog for European distribution. What is the most efficient way to convert units of measure, like inches, pounds, and others, to the metric format in Microsoft Word? You're presented with five possible answers. Choice A, formulas. Choice B, using functions. Choice C, using autocorrect. Choice D, equations. And last but not least, choice E, cross-reference. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Let's go ahead and transition into showcasing the solution. I'm about to share how I approach the question. And if you got the better methods or maybe brilliant alternative, make sure to share it in comments. Let's examine each provided answer option to identify the accurate solution. Let's start with the option A. 
I think formulas are used for mathematical calculations, but they are not the most efficient way to convert units of measure to the metric format in Microsoft Word. In fact, formulas typically involve arithmetic operations and are not designed for unit conversion. Choice B, function, is also incorrect. The term function in this context is vague and doesn't directly relate to converting units of measure to the metric format. It does not align with the most efficient methods for this specific task. I think choice D, equation, is also incorrect. Equations in Microsoft Word are used for mathematical or algebraic expressions. While they can handle unit conversions theoretically, they are not designed for the specific tasks of converting units of measure to the metric format. And I hope you are not surprised that choice E, cross-reference, is also incorrect. Cross-referencing is a tool used to link and refer to specific content within the document, such as figures, tables, or headings. It is unrelated to converting units of measure to the metric format. This analysis leads us to choice C, autocorrect. Microsoft Word's autocorrect feature can be used to automatically correct and replace predefined abbreviations or symbols with their corresponding metric units. This is extremely efficient way to convert units of measure to the metric format. To access Measurement Converter, you need to navigate to Word Options and then click on Proofing. Here you need to click on Autocorrect Options and navigate to Actions. Once you click OK on all of these changes and then select the dimensions 5 inches, additional menu item becomes available which is represented by additional actions. So now you can convert 5 inches into 12.7 centimeters. Similar functionality becomes available on the weight category. You select 0.37 pounds, navigate to additional actions, and you can convert them to 0.17 kilograms. In this section, we will look at Microsoft Excel questions frequently used in a test. Microsoft Excel test is a standardized assessment designed to measure an individual's proficiency in using this powerful spreadsheet software application. This test assesses a candidate's knowledge and skills in various Excel functions, formulas, data manipulation, formatting, and data analysis. It is commonly used by employers during the hiring process to determine a candidate's level of Excel proficiency. This assessment typically includes a variety of Excel tasks and exercises that range from basic to more advanced functionalities within Microsoft Excel. These tasks might involve creating and formatting spreadsheets, performing calculations using formulas and functions, managing data sets, creating charts and graphs, and demonstrating an understanding of data analysis techniques. Let's look at some sample Microsoft Excel test questions we typically see on the test. Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of basic Excel formulas. Isabella needs to find the maximum sales figure for March. Which selection is correct? You can see the data set, which shows sales for electronics, appliances, home and garden, and clothing. And sales figures are for January, February, and March. You need to select one of the four following choices. Choice A. The formula would be sum and the data range will be D2 through D5. Choice B. The formula would be average, and the data set will be D2 through D5. Choice C. The formula will be max with the data range of D2 through D5, or formula will be large with the data set D2 through D5, comma 1. And last but not least, choice D. Formula will be highest, and the data set will be D2 through D5, or formula will be max with the data set D2 through D5. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right choice. On my end, I am going to jump to Microsoft Excel to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice C. Two formulas that can help you accomplish the result are max with the range D2 through D5 and large with the range D2 through D5, comma 1. What's interesting about the max formula is that it always returns the largest value from the data set. But large formula allows you to find the nth largest value in the data set. For example, if I want to find the second largest value for March, I can just type the large formula, select the data range, and after comma, indicate 2. And as you can see, 
This brings the second value from the top. The first one would be 429.95, and then the second largest value is 360.91. Did you come up with the different answer? Please share your solution and rationale in comments. Here is an amazing question we see on the test more and more often. You need to find the correct output of Microsoft Excel function. And you're presented with the statement equal sign, floor, and then in parentheses 64,5. You have four different choices to select from. Choice A, 60. Choice B, 65. Choice C, 63. And last but not least, choice D, 70. Take a close look, refresh your memory, and see if you can select the right answer. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's jump to Microsoft Excel, where we can solve this together. Let's put the floor function into the cell B2. Once we type the function, you see that it accepts two arguments. The first argument is the number. The second argument is significance. The floor function is used to round number down to the nearest integer based on the multiple of the significance. So the correct answer here is 60, which is represented by choice A. Did you figure it out correctly? Or did you have a different answer? Please make sure to post your answer and solution as well as rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of Microsoft Excel features. Purchase orders, POs, were mistakenly created with 2021 financial year ID. Which Excel feature allows you to change all purchase order starting numbers from 2021 to 2022? And you have four different choices. Choice A, Consolidate. Choice B, Flash Fill. Choice C, Goal Sick. And last but not least, choice D, Find and Replace. Take a close look at the purchase order numbers in Microsoft Excel and see which feature would you choose to complete the action. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice D, Find and Replace, because Find and Replace feature in Microsoft Excel allows users to quickly search for and replace specific text or values in the worksheet. Let's jump to Microsoft Excel so I can show you an example. Here in Excel, I try to emulate the scenario from the question. In column A, you see purchase order numbers. To replace 2021 as a leading year, you need to navigate on the Home tab into the Find and Select area and click Replace. You're presented with Find and Replace box. And here we need to type in 2021 in find what and replace it with 2022. I am going to demonstrate you two ways of doing the replace. Let's find the first value first. We click find next and Microsoft Excel pointed us to the row two. Here we can click replace and it will replace the value in the row two from 2021 to 2022. We can also use the feature called replace all which will complete remaining nine replacements. So I believe the correct answer here is choice D, find and replace. Do you have a better solution? Please make sure to post your answer in comments. I have a surprise challenge for you. I'm going to give you a practice question and ask you to solve it on your own and post the answer in comments. Isabella needs to find the highest sales amount for March. Which Excel formula expression should she use? You are presented with the data set and four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. And once ready, make sure to post your answer and solution in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck solving the challenge. A lot of times you might get a question on how to sort data in Excel from smallest to largest. For example, you might be presented with the data set which shows student names and their grades on different subjects. Here on the screen we see the grades in physics, math, chemistry and biology. And we need to sort this data set based on the student names. To accomplish this task we need to select the data set and in the Home tab navigate to sort and filter and select 
sort A to Z. This will rearrange the data in the alphabetical order based on the student name. An alternative solution might be to use custom sort. To use custom sort, you need to select the data, navigate to the Home tab, and then select Sort and Filter, and then Custom Sort. Here you are presented with the screen where you need to select the column by which you are going to be sorting, and then select the order. In my case, I am going to select the column as Math Grade, and then in the order, I am going to select Smallest to Largest. Once I clicked OK, you see that the data set was rearranged from smallest to largest based on the values in the math column. Let's recap. To sort the data in Excel, you need to either use sort smallest to largest or custom sort functions. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting question you frequently see on the test. You are presented with a set of data and you need to add serial number column to this data using Excel formula. In our case, we are presented with student grades information. And for each student, we need to add a serial number. Do you know how to do it? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can complete the steps in the simulator. And I am going to move forward and reveal the solution for you. The first step here is to add a new column. Assuming that we will be adding the data to the left of the first column, the easiest way to add a new column is to do a right mouse click, click Insert, and this action adds a new column. We will give new column a name serial number and extend the column so we can see the data. The first number in the series, in my case, will be 1, but you can use pretty much any number. In the next row, we will add a formula and our formula will be very simple. We will add the value of the first serial number, plus 1, or you can use any different formula depending on your business circumstances. Once you hit enter, you see that the second value is 2, and now I can expand this formula for the entire data set, and you will see that the numbers are increasing. Keep in mind that this number might be different from the actual row ID, and if you use different formula, the number will be different for sure. And then the last step here is to apply formatting to the column. To do this, we need to select the column, navigate to the Home tab, select Format Painter, and then apply it to the newly created column. Here's the question for you to test your knowledge. Steve is analyzing a data set of sales transactions, which has gaps in data after system crash. Which formula should he use to determine the number of revenue generating transactions? You're presented with the data set and four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look, make sure you understand the question, and select the right formula for the answer. And once ready, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Thanks for participating, and good luck solving the challenge. Very frequently on the test, you get a question about usage of formulas in Excel. And sometimes you get a questions on how to display data in the status bar. For example, let's look at the question how to display minimum, maximum, count and average in Excel status bar. You are presented with the data set of the student grades, which displays student names and their grades in physics, math, chemistry and biology. Do you know how to add auto calculations for their grades in the status bar? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share the answer with you. To accomplish this task, as you might have guessed, all properties related to the status bar can be enabled by right mouse clicking on the status bar itself. This presents us with the formulas for average, count, numerical count, minimum, maximum and sum. In our case, we need to select Average, Count, Minimum, and Maximum, and you will see that all these values now show on the status bar. Do you have an alternative way to solve it? Please make sure to post it in comments.
A lot of times you might be presented with the question that tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel user interface. Let's look at the sample question from the recent test. How to move the data set three cells down and one cell to the left in Microsoft Excel efficiently. You are presented with the data set of the student names. It contains names of the students as well as their grades in physics, math, chemistry and biology. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the final answer to you. Obviously, there are multiple ways to move the data in Excel. One of the easiest ways is to select the data set and then in the Home tab use the Cut function. Identify the new location by putting the cursor in the upper right corner of the new location and pasting the data in the new location. But the question is, is this way the most efficient way, as the question asks? Let me undo this operation by using the undo button, and I'll show you another way which might be more efficient. I'm going to use the escape button on the keyboard to unselect the range, select it again, and the trick here is when you move the cursor to the end of the range, you are able to drag and drop the range. I'm going to drag and drop it three cells down and one cell to the right and position it in the new location. Do you know any other solutions? Please make sure to share them in comments. Here's the question which tests your knowledge of modern Excel formulas. You're presented with the list of student names in the column A and you need to decide which Excel formula should you use to retrieve the value of the row with ID 7. The value in this row is Prisha Patel. You have four different choices to select the correct formula. Choice A, formula row. Choice B, formula find. Choice C, formula index. And choice D, formula match. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 20 seconds. See if you can pause this video to come up with the right solution. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and share with you the correct solution to this problem. As you might have figured out, the correct formula is index. In fact, index returns a value of the element in the table or in the array selected by the row and column number indexes. When entering index formula, you need to enter the array and provide the row number. The column number is optional. In the case of this particular question, to retrieve the value of the row with ID 6, you need to enter the index formula and then select an array of values starting from the row with ID 2 and then enter the value 6 because our array of values starts with the actual values with the title of this range. Once you hit enter you see that the correct value was selected by the formula. Do you see any other solutions? Do you know any other formulas that will help accomplish this task? Please make sure to post them in comments. Here's an interesting Microsoft Excel test question which tests your knowledge of Excel formulas. You need to show how to add current date and time in Microsoft Excel using formula and then format it as long date. Do you know how to do it? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the formula. And I am going to move forward and show you the solution. In fact, the solution is very simple. All you need to do is type in the now function. Now function returns the date and time in the standard format. To format it as long date, you need to navigate to the home ribbon tab and in the number format section, select the long date. Did you figure it out on your own? Hope you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I have a surprise for you, and my surprise is the practice question for you to solve. Lakshmi needs to determine the smallest quarterly sales amount for 2023. Which of the following formulas can she use in Excel to accomplish this? You're presented with the data set and four possible choices. Take a close look to see if you can select choice A, B, C or D. And once ready, make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. 
Thanks for participating and good luck solving the challenge. Here's the very interesting problem where you need to determine the value using index and match Excel formulas. Specifically, you need to determine the math grade for Prisha Patel. You're presented with the range of values, which includes student name, physics, math, chemistry, and biology grades. And you need to enter the formula to calculate the value. Do you see the solution? Do you know how to solve it? Let's move forward and solve this challenge together. We can solve this challenge in two steps. In step one, we need to use the match formula to identify the ID for the row with Prisha's name. First, we need to select what we're looking for. In this case, we can either type the full name for Prisha, or we can use asterisks and just type the first name. Second value for the match formula is the range. We need to select the range from A2 to A11. And third value, we need to specify what type of match. In our case, we'll be doing exact match where we need to select the value of zero. Once completed, formula returns value of six, which represents ID for the row where Prisha's name is located. Once we've identified the row, we need to find the second column in this row to return the math grade for Prisha. To do this, we start typing the formula, select the range B2 to E11 to identify all the grades, then enter the match formula to help identify the row where Prisha's information is located. And then we enter the column ID. And looks like I mistyped the formula and entered extra apostrophe. Once I remove this extra apostrophe and hit enter, the correct value is returned which is the math grade for Prisha. The final formula looks like this. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.